Hey everybody, my name is Adam from Encounter Wargaming. Today I'm going to do a quick and easy tutorial on pin washing. So, uh, this kind of the big idea here is that uh, we want to get better at painting our models, and a big part of that is learning how to use washes. Um, and everyone's kind of taken out the Nuln oil and dunked your model in it, or, you know, taken a paintbrush and covered your whole model in Nuln oil. And for the longest time, that's how I painted every single miniature. I did all my base coats, got out the, 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 the darkest black brown wash I could find, um, and just coated the entire model and re highlighted everything up. Um, so, pin washing is kind of a new technique, and it's particularly good on Space Marines, which is what, um, the model I'm going to use to show you the technique today. Um, it's, a, it's a different kind of technique, uh, number one, because it's an oil paint, not an acrylic paint, um, but it also works entirely different. This is where you get your model to the kind of the color you want um, it to be, um, so you're not like base coating and then highlighting, right, like uh, with the wash in the middle, so kind of like you're you're starting your color, then you're washing, and then you're finishing your color. This is where you like you finish your color, and then you wash it, because um, there's you know there's there's a whole bunch of different interactions that happen when you wash something. Like take your null oil, uh, cover your Mephiston red in null oil, and you get a much darker red, right? Because the wash totally tints the whole thing. Whereas this, um, this is gonna be a totally different story. This is this is get your color to where you want it to be. Um, and, and pin wash it just to put uh, some shadows, some lines, particularly uh, the reason I'm showing you in a Space Marine is because you get these nice crisp lines um, between all of the details and pin washing is perfect for this because it, it just puts that nice dark uh, line of, of differentiation between all the different colors and so so it's fabulous. I'm a big fan, big fan of pin washing and we're just gonna we're gonna teach you how to do that today. Um, so let's point the camera down to the paint table and uh, and jump right in. So here we are in the Battle Brothers Studios, and I have some some models out here, and I have some of the uh, things we will need for today. So first off, I have just regular old Nuln Oil gloss. Um, quick note on this stuff: regular Nuln Oil and the regular GW washes are totally broken. Every time I use the matte versions of these, I get pools of white cloudiness in the deep cracks. I just think the regular GW washes are broken. I don't, they just don't work for me. So the glossy ones I found are fantastic because they don't do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. <laughs> they actually put dark things in the cracks and not white clouds. So there you go. Anyways, rant over, null and oil. Um, this is an acrylic paint, pretty cool stuff, great for a lot of things. Um, this is what we're going to be talking about today, the panel line, and this is this stuff's made by Tamiya. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys the dark brown, just because that is the color I use to do my Luna Wolf Space Marines, but there's, uh, I have four different colors, probably two of them are, are fantastic for this technique. Um, I, I mainly use the black and the dark brown. Um, and then I, and then I have a Humbrol Clear Gloss, this is what I shoot through my airbrush, just kind of as is. Um, in preparation to use the oil wash here. And lastly, one thing I have here, um, I get uh, Gamsol in these big containers from the art supply store. It's just mineral spirits, so you can see I took Sharpie, wrote it on this container, I got a little bit of mineral spirits floating around in there. Um, so those are some of the things you're gonna need. Uh, I am gonna use uh, my airbrush to apply the paint and the gloss varnish, um, but you don't necessarily need an airbrush to do this, so. That's exciting for all of you um, hand brush painters out there, um, as I was for for basically 20 years, and then I got an airbrush and it totally changed my life. So um, for all you hand brushers out there, you can still do this stuff too. Um, so now that you know all the stuff you're gonna need, let's start talking about the idea behind this all. Um, so let's start off, let's zoom in on this Space Marine here and kind of really dig into what the result is gonna be um, yeah, I just want to show you an example so that you can kind of envision that for the for the model coming up. So let's zoom in on that Space Marine. All right, so here is my Hellblaster Primaris Marine right here. And what we're going to do is basically uh, add in this panel line stuff to, to help define all of the detailing. 
Um, I find most people who do airbrush and because uh, they're kind of they kind of get into it because they want to do a quick job of their models. They want something to speed up the process. Um, and so what they do is people just kind of do some quick airbrushing and then pick out some details and and they call it done. Um, and so I find all of the colors. There's no like fine definition between. Um, all the areas and, and the detail is really lackluster. So this is actually, it doesn't take that much time um, to just get some nice definition and to really make some of these details pop. And so here's here's an example of what I'm talking about. So here's our Primaris Marine, right? And, uh, and in here, there's all sorts of nice detail in between his finger line right there, in between his wrist, um, this little bit here, like this kneecap, this big black line beautiful detail right there and you know this little kind of square detail all these little all these little differentiated armor armor panels right so just you see the layers of armor um, even the uh, the sockets between his legs where his knee knee bend joins right there's just you get these nice dark lines between each one um, same thing with the backpack right you get this kind of vent ish looking area all the the dark lines here this is all done with the Tamiya panel line. It's a nice circle right here, right? So all those dark lines. So let's take, let's compare, right? So here's just spray paint, white primed dude, right? So you can see it obviously because the details there and so the light is casting some natural shadows there, um, but it doesn't really pop. The whole model is generally pretty flat, like especially compare these, compare these to the two legs, right? There's detail there, but it's not popping. Like here, you can see it, it's popping. There's some high contrast here between these two layers here, between these two layers of armor here. And there's not a lot of contrast right there, right? The light is coming in at the right angle and just washing out all the shadow. You can see a little bit of shadow in here on the backpack, right? Um, but if I turn the model, right, to face the light, it goes away. Like all these nice lines here, they just disappear. Um, where's this guy? We turn him upside down, and you still you still see all the nice the nice definition there. Um, so there we go. So that's that's the goal. People call this yeah black lining, pin washing, um, whatever what, whatever you want. So but that's that's basically the goal. Um, and so one strategy for that is to kind of take your your non oil and very carefully with a paintbrush just like paint it paint it in the lines and so I mean we could here let's let's do that let's set up and I'll show you kind of what you would normally do to to pin wash um, without this stuff alright so here's my space marine and if I wanted a nice nice white armor panel there um, then and I but I wanted some definition like we were talking about I would take this non oil and I would very carefully get in the crack and slowly paint this nice black line in there and it's it's quite a task to make it nice and straight not even Like it's tough. It's tough to make it perfectly even, and then it, and then it can pull up in the uh, in the crack there. Ugh. All right, pull up in, in in the cracks, and and it'll it'll just it'll stain all the area around it. Um, if you get it, if you're too sloppy with it, right? So there you go. So that's not bad, right? But once it's dry, if there's any mistakes, you can't. You can't generally fix it unless you go back and just paint it perfectly white. That's a kind of that's like a typical old school method of doing your black lining. But you can see that took me about a minute just to do that one shoulder pad line there, and it looks pretty fresh, right? Like that's popping. That's really popping. Um, with the uh, with the panel line stuff, uh, this is just gonna blow your mind. <laughs> it's just gonna blow your mind how long it takes. Um, so there you go. Let's let's jump right, in. So here we are. First things first, though, we do have to lay down some color. We got we got this beautiful cream off white color for these Space Marines, and this is just white primer. So um, just to let you in on a little secret, my recipe here is uh, is Vallejo Game Air Leather Brown 
Leo Gamer Bone White, and then mix in a little half and half Bone White and White. Uh, so there we go. So let's do that real quick um, and just get the airbrush going, get the paint a flowing. Cool. Leather Brown in the pot. Here she goes. For anybody interested, I am using an Iwata HPCS. It's a beauty. I love it. It's great. Have one. Don't have one. Don't care. Do what you want with your life. Um, here we go. And so just, uh, yeah, just, just spray that on. I kind of always focus on the underneath first. Cool. Anyways, go ahead, do that whole guy, and come back when you're done. Ready to go on that. So let's move on. Let's get some bone white on there. This uh, this nice leather brown uh, color here, working up to a bone, and we're just gonna kind of fade it in there. Just like just we're gonna leave some of the dark bits, and the reason I'm walking you guys through this is because to see the progression all the way to the full um, to the full color with the panel lining is is just you got to see the full story, right? So here we go. Let's take this, and we're kind of doing like a a zenithal type approach, um, not not a, like a true zenithal because we we want to make it look cool, not just be so worried about the 45 degrees. Beautiful, getting that helmet and that chest plate, and I oh gotta make sure my hands not blocking the camera. Beautiful. Working on that. Work way my way down. Backs of the legs. Underneath of the legs. Build up that back leg a little bit more. Put this back leg. Build up that nice color transition on that on that bolt gun rifle. Just do a little bit more fading to make the uh, underneath that leg a little more, a little less stark. All right, cool. So there it is. There's, we're building up to that nice bone. Now let's get that white in there and just finish this off. And actually I do want to get another highlight on that foot right there. Beautiful. Great. So there you go. So one more highlight and we are ready to start doing the panel line technique. All right, so I got my pre-made mix right here. Just go ahead and, uh, and pour a little of that in, in the airbrush. Beauties. All right, it's probably good enough. Oh, and All right, let's have some fun with it. Oh, nice little white highlight right on the tops of things and edges. Of course, I'm I'm blocking this so you can't see a single thing that I'm doing. <laughs> Top of that boots, edges of that boots. Greaves. Let's get a little bit of the upper thigh. Gotta get his helmet for sure. Let's get the bottom of his toe a little bit. Beautiful. Obviously, you can hear my airbrush compressor cutting in and out. Really, no way to avoid that. But, uh, anyways, let's get his butt plate real quick. Alright, beauties. Ah, and this shoulder pad right here. And I just want to get in here on that kneecap. I'm not liking how the shadow of the gun is blocking that kneecap that much. There we go. Okay, if I do too much, I'm probably going to get myself in trouble. 
great, fabulous. So, now, now the white is done. What what I would normally do is like go block, block in all the other colors um, before I gloss it, but because I'm just showing you guys uh, the technique real quick, I'm, I'm not gonna go ahead and, and block that in just to save time and keep the video going and, and just get it all done. Um, so I'm gonna let that dry real quick uh, and then what we're gonna do next is take our Humbrol Clear and just gloss varnish the whole thing. So let's be right back when it's dry. Right, so here's my Humbrol Clear. First things first, you gotta know about this stuff. Gotta shake it up good. Gotta give it good shakes. Lots of shakes. Good shakes. Lots of good shakes. Really shake it up. If you don't, what I find is it kind of breaks up on the surface and doesn't, uh, yeah. It just doesn't doesn't cover smooth or evenly, so good shakes all around. That's what you need. Here we go. Let's load up. Okay, okay. And just I am gonna turn on my my backwards fan here. Oh my, sorry, my air vent. I'm obviously in my spray booth. I'm gonna turn that on. Um, I would advise always staying nicely ventilated when doing this stuff. Just cover, just cover the whole thing here. Making sure to get from the bottom up. Alright, there you go. He's done. I don't bother mixing in water or anything. Just like, just like getting the work done. Um, there you go. Let me turn this off. Now we will have to wait for that to dry a little bit um, before we actually jump in on the panel line but uh, but yeah I mean I like a nice solid coat because what happens if you go too thin with this stuff is um, uh, you get the text there's actually still like texture on there from the paint um, like if you use like a spray primer uh, it, it's more textured than you would think and so the gloss varnish really creates a nice smooth coat for the uh, the panel line to work its magic. Um, so yeah, the, the the gloss. Now, obviously, there's I want to be careful in how I tell you this because if you do too much, you know you start to cover and you start covering detail and the the lines aren't as crisp, and that's a danger with the panel line as well. I mean, the panel line really wants the details to be nice and sharp. Um, but the gloss helps reduce the surface tension so that it, it just it works its magic a little bit better and it's easier to clean up after so that's why i highly recommend the gloss uh, varnish up there so and i actually get my my humbrol clear i think you can get humbrol stuff just from like a desiree art store that's a brand of an art store here in in canada um i don't know just google this stuff find a distributor near you depending where you are in the world but yeah, this stuff, it's tried and true for me. I've gone through, I don't know, probably, you know, 20 of these bottles. Maybe that's exaggerating. Maybe 10 of these bottles in, in the last few years because I paint lots of stuff. But it's a nice big bottle. Just tons of gloss. Make it real glossy. Easy to work with. Throw it straight in the airbrush. No complaints. There you go. Awesome. So once this guy is dry, we'll just cut the video. We'll come back in and finally get to work some panel line magic. So here we are, set up to start panel lining, and I'm very excited to show you guys this part of the whole process. So I got my stuff here, to me a panel line, dark brown, this stuff you really gotta shake it. So just like, shake it like a Polaroid picture, baby. That's it, yes. Shake it, shake, shake it, shake it, whoa. -ho. Uh, there is there is a lot of stuff that sits at the bottom of these, um, and a lot of the lighter fluid or medium that, that whatever it is that this all this unique mixture of stuff sits in um, gathers at the top, and so you want the you want the heavy pigment at the bottom to really uh, be spread throughout to get a nice dark line. All right, so there it is. So now I would suggest uh, at home if you will be doing this for any length of time. Um, using some kind of protective mask because this is an oil paint so do this in a well ventilated area um, I'll just be doing this for 
a, a quick second with you guys and so I won't turn on my my air vent so that you can still hear me and we can talk about what's going on um, but if you're doing this at home do this in a well ventilated area and with uh, and with good protection so there you go so you get, you do have to be careful with oil paints which is um, why this technique will not be for everybody because um, you either will not have an, a space suitable enough to do this or or whatnot um, so there you go or you're just a, you're a kid and you shouldn't be doing this anyway so <laughs> here we go all right so let's get this out now this stuff's pretty cool too because it comes with a with an applicator in in the bottle here I'm actually gonna switch these around okay so now if we get let's let's get real close in on this guy all right perfect now just just watch I'm gonna take some of this stuff here um, and let's drop it right on his chest eagle okay and you guys you guys watch what happens it just shoots into all the little veins and capillaries boom that are on there wow that's amazing and it doesn't really stain stain the the other stuff um, and you'll see even even less of a reason why it, it doesn't stain in a minute so um, here we go let's do so another a long nice long flat line so let's do this backpack line right here okay so I'm just gonna look I'm just gonna drop a little bit in there the whole line is now filled with paint boom in one shot this stuff is literally magic sauce okay let's try a space marine shoulder pad look at it it's just flowing it's just flowing through the capillaries I'm gonna use gravity a little bit Man, look at that just the whole top half now here you look at the top so it, it, it did get a little bit messy right and with an acrylic paint normally it would get a little bit messy it would stain the rest of the thing and you're kind of screwed like you have to wipe it off right away um, or you're screwed it's, it's permanently stained and, and it you don't have a perfectly clean model anymore but hey let's let's finish this shoulder pad here boom like look at that it's just it's it's like it's like cheating let's do some stuff in the bolter super cool like I just touch it and it just flows all through it like it's just it's just absolutely cheating in the loveliest sense cool so um, because it's an oil paint again this this does take a minute to dry so I, I'll usually do a bunch of infantry at one time right so I'll do like 10 guys at a time and then I'll go hang out with my two-year-old for an hour or whatever and then you can come back and do the rest so um, so let's leave this guy for a minute and we'll come back and we will, I'll show you how to do the cleanup. Great. All right. So let's take a minute and clean this guy up. And so if we zoom in here, just to quick, quickly recap, we just have some dirty spots. We just have a couple dirty spots. The line's not perfectly straight. Now, if this was the null oil and you spent all that time and you're super precise and you made your lines straight as you possibly could, and you, you're still going to come out with some of these messy areas, even though you you try your best and work your hardest. Um, and so with a null oil, it's game over. But with panel line, it's not the end of the story. It's not. So get your mineral spirits. I got Gamsol from my local art supply store because this is an odorless mineral spirit. And uh, so there you go. That's open right there. Get a little on your brush. And now I just, I just coat this over the dude. Where have I done some lines? Where is it a little messy? Is it there? Okay. So now chemical reaction is going on right here where it's it's doing something with that oil paint there, mixing together. And now I can come in with my with my finger. Just get rid of that little mistake there. Make that line nice and straight and smooth. Boom. Isn't that brilliant? Now, if you like the kind of dirty look, maybe you don't do the stage. But oil paint is a great, great weathering technique as well. So you could you could streak you could streak down all those all these spots to make some nice one, a nice uh, sorry a nice um, weathered effect. Okay, so here's another messy spot, right? We got this uh, oil paint making that white look dirty. So I just take my finger, 
wipe it off. My finger doesn't quite fit underneath the uh, pollution air on the, on the backpack, so I'll just use the paintbrush. All right, now we got a nice, straight, clean white line, black line, all the way around. And so how brilliant is that? There you go, guys. That's to me a panel line. Um, I'm not really advertising the product. I'm just kind of teaching you guys about oil washes and pin washes. Um, they're not giving me anything. <laughs> they're, there's, it's not advertising. This is a really cool, easy technique and a great product I found to get some work done on on your models here. And so enjoy it. Use it. Um, I mean, it, it saves me so much time. Because what I used to do is, is paint the base color, wash the whole thing with some kind of wash like null and oil, and then re-block out all those things and basically re-base coat the whole model again, being very careful not to go in the cracks, and then highlight, highlight. Um, and this is just so much faster. It's so much faster. I mean, imagine you do this on your whole model, you, you glob the gamsol everywhere, and then you just take your finger off, clean a bunch of stuff up, and bing, bang, boom. Just the whole thing is black lined in a couple minutes. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, great technique. I highly suggest anybody who's out there with an airbrush, I mean, stop being lazy. Just put in a couple extra minutes and, and make it really pop. Like, this is, look at the benefit here, right? It's just like a great, great effect on all this stuff. Nice, nice smooth lines and transitions. Brilliant. Awesome. So, all right, there it is. There, that's that's all there is to be said about that, guys. If you like this video, love if you just go down there, hit subscribe, and if you really like this video, you could jump on our Patreon. Supports everything we do here at the channel. Uh, gets us terrain, helps us do more battle reports and new miniature games. <coughs> helps us continue to uh, to put out tutorials like this for you. Um, and so yeah, that'd be awesome. Jump over to Patreon, become a patron of the channel today, and there's special perks for you if you do so, like discounts at online retailers, and uh, and and maybe even freebies depending on the level of pledge that you give. So, guys, that is everything. We will see you at our next encounter. <laughs>